Hello, salamat datang dan salamat atas kesuk sasan dia de kanya pekan kepudayaan nasional secara virtual tahun ini. Saya Rachel Cook, Counselor Diplomacy Public dari Kedutaan Besar Amerika Sirikat di Jakarta. On behalf of the Embassy, I want to thank the Directorate General of Culture of the Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology for the opportunity to participate once again in this important celebration. In keeping with the Ministry's theme of Sandang, Pangan, Dan Papan, Today, we share a special video showcasing the American cultural tradition of quilt making. In American culture, quilts symbolize family, connections between the past and present, creativity, and community heritage. The unique patchwork quilting tradition of Gee's Bend, Alabama began in the early 19th century and continues to this day. G's Bend quilts constitute a crucial chapter in the history of American art and are in the permanent collections of over 20 leading art museums in the United States. For the past 18 months, we have all been challenged by the COVID-19 pandemic, but today we stand together in celebrating the long-standing cultural ties between Indonesia and the United States. National Culture Week reminds us of the power and importance of artistic traditions, shared cultural heritage, and creative industries. As we build back better after the COVID-19 pandemic, we celebrate those things in our lives that sustain and nourish us. Clothing, food, shelter, and the ways in which humans express themselves artistically while satisfying these basic needs. May you and your families stay safe and healthy until we meet again. Once again, thank you to the Ministry of Education and Culture and National Culture Week. Hello, my name is Mary Margaret Petway, head chair of the Souls Grown Deep Foundation and Community Partnership who work to ensure that our quilts are collected in museums across the world, and who also work to ensure new economic opportunities for the ladies still continuing the tradition of quilting in G's Bend, Alabama. E, uh, Indonesia has a rich cultural heritage, and I love their fabrics. They have beautiful fabrics. I would love to share the quilting, tr quilting tradition of G's Bend, Alabama. Please enjoy the video that has been shown in U.S. embassies across the world. Enjoy and thank you from the ladies of G's Bend, Alabama.
My name is Louisiana Bendolph. I was born here in G's Bend in 1960. And we lived on a farm. We got up early. We got up around six o'clock and we would, you know, eat something and then we would go to the fields. And then we would work until around six, the sun going down again. So we would have to come out the field and get the wood, pump the water, and then the next morning we do the same thing. If it rained, we went to school. If not, then we were in the fields. When I was 12, I made my first quilt. Quilting was always around us, because back then in G's Bend, it was really cold. And so it was something that was done because we needed it. I get my design from my mind. I be sitting there thinking about how I wanted to make a quilt. And then he just come in my head how I wanted to make it. I piece it with the machine. And then when I get ready to quilt it, I get a, the lining and the bedding. That's good. Roll this up for you. Come on, now it's time. And that you would put into frames. If you get a chance to see a quilt frame that we use and workhorses that carpenter used to build on it. We use them as quilting frame. We call them our quilting horses. And we put them in the frame and, and that's how we quilt. There's three layers to a quilt and you would have to quilt all those layers by hand. When we be sitting around the quilt, we be talking about the Lord and talking about how our kids act and we be praying and we be singing, we be moaning. And then sometimes we be snacking on the queer, have some fruit or something on the queer, we be snacking on the queer. I decided to try to find my own identity in quilt making. So I wanted to make a quilt to honor my mom and Alonzio, which is my mom's first cousin. My mom's favorite color is hot pink. So I decided, I said, I'll make something with hot pink and I'll make something that's kind of easy, but I'll put a twist in it. And so I decided to put a triangle not quite into the center of the quilt, but off to the side and kind of like a window. I love looking out of windows. I always have since I was a little girl. And I said, and this is kind of like looking back into my past. Looking back into the past, but not quite going all the way back into the past. Joseph G. came from North Carolina in the early 1800s and brought some slaves. This was still territory when Joseph G. came. He was the first one to, to get this land as, as a land grant from the government. And he lived here for a good little while, but then he got sick and he let this land go to his cousins, the Petways. Petway came down uh, from North Carolina he brought his slaves with him, and they say he had a hundred or so slaves. And they all walked, with the exception of one, and that was the cook. And they didn't want the cook to walk because they want the cook to stay clean and not be dirty. So when they came into the, the area, the Petways inherited the, the plantation from their uncle, Joseph G. So it became the Petway Plantation, so everyone who came on the plantation, their last name became Petway. During the Great Depression, there was two photographers that came down to photograph 
G's being living style, and evidently it had a very important impact on the Roosevelt administration. The price of cotton fell way below five cents a pound. So times got hard here in G's Bend, and the people in Camden began to foreclose on some of the, the farmers here, took all their corn, the livestock, to include cattle, pigs, and everything. So the people here were pretty much left to starve. But somehow Red Cross got the word, and they came in and started bringing in you know, food to help out. It was really hard when I was growing up. We had nothing but the fireplace and the stove and the kitchen to keep warm. And we had to make quilts to keep warm. At that time, it was like a 10,000 acres farm uh, that was owned by the plantation owner. So the government came in and purchased the farm from the white plantation owner and then turned around and subdivided the community into like 100 different units. And with that unit, there came a, a house, a smokehouse, a hen house, an art house, and a barn. And it also had like 140, sometimes 145 acres of land to go with it. And they gave them 40 years to pay for it at a price of um, about $2,700 per house. This is one of my favorite quilts in the exhibition, and we selected it for the opening. I guess for me, this sort of epitomizes one of the first things I felt about the quilts, is that you were looking at place, at the geography of the area. And it was as though you were just flying over the fields and the houses. And in photographs, I think it's very hard to understand the textures in these quilts, the subtlety of pattern, the faded fabrics, which are the sort of remnants of people's lives. And I like old material. I like khakis. I like jeans. I like gangnam shirts, corduroy, but new material. I don't like new clothes. It's too hard to work with. I like something been worn, a lot of love, and a lot of softness. These are the sort of the basic, what we think of as the basic building blocks of the G's Bend quilt pattern. It's the house top and the brick layer quilts. The idea is using rectangles and squares of fabric to build up your design. And the quilters themselves have said that making a quilt is like building a house. You start with one room here, you add another, and keep on adding on. And that's exactly how these have been created. Taking a few basic designs, they run with them, and they've made them their own, and are able to create infinite variety from just, you know, a few basic shapes. I call this quilt a crazy quilt, because it put together all sorts of ways. And my mind said, call it a crazy quilt, and that's what I called it. Crazy cook. I always had a mind to do so. And if you want to do so, you could do it. It ain't nothing we can't do if we want to do it. And I believe that to my heart. The switch from queer to print. It all worked together because making a print is just like making a queer. And I was asked to make a little small marquette, a little small miniature size quilt, a 24 by 24.
and they ironed the little Marquettes out and they have to have all the seams flat. And once they do that, they get a copper plating about a little bit bigger than the Marquette and put some beeswax on it. And then they lay the impression of the Marquette with the right side down onto the copper plating and they run it through a press onto the paper to get the impression of the Marquette. And after they do that, then they take it and spit bite it. Uh, Lou is going to come over here and she's going to take a paintbrush, dip it into an acid mixture of nitric acid, water, and gum arabic, and paint it onto the plate. Where the acid contacts the copper, it will actually eat into the copper, creating a pit. We'll rinse off the plate with water, then we'll come over here and we're going to wash off the plate with solvents to remove all the asphaltum and rosin. And what will be left is just an etched area in the copper that is exactly what you see exposed here. And then we'll ink it up. We remove all the extra ink that's residing on the top here. Then we take that plate, which has been inked, tarlatined, and hand wiped, and run it through a press. The paper is wet. It's usually 100% cotton paper. And the, the pressure of the blankets on the top roller and the wet paper, are pushed. the paper is pushed down into those grooves and it picks up the ink. And when you pull back your paper, voila. Every time it comes through there, that color be coming out through there, it be so beautiful. And when they finish with it, I say, ooh, wow! <laughs> And that print I named, Still Have Joy, Tears of Pride. I never used the word pride. And that was something to be proud of, that these prints was going to be hung in embassies around the world. Me, Lou, somebody with really low self-esteem, somebody who never believed in themselves. And now here I was asked to join uh, the world of artists that share that great honor. <laughs>